All right, all right, all right. So listen, guys, we had a little bit of technical issues, and uh, but you know, I've got super well known, so we've definitely got it fixed, no problems now. So let's get started, guys. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Takoya Carlton, and of course, I help struggling entrepreneurs and individuals by creating tools and a custom roadmap to gain clarity and achieve real-time success. And so that's who I am. And of course, I've got the the woman, uh, the the myth, the legend, Superwoman, uh, uh, Batwoman, uh, Wonder Woman, all oh, men on this uh, <laughs> Zoom right now. And of course, we're going to really just be talking to her and, and learn a little bit more about her. Uh, but again, uh, Margaret Pastor, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Good stuff. We would definitely uh, appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. We know you could have been so many other places, and uh, but you chose to be here with us. Uh, us here, us just pure mortals. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so here's the thing. We're, we're going to talk a little bit because, you know, most of these uh, interviews that I've done in the past, a lot of these guys have been, uh, you know, high sits and seven figure earners uh, within the business space. Right. Uh, you know, or people who have multiple, multiple books, you know, as an author. And so uh, I know we really have known each other for a long time, but being reintroduced, um, you know, because I moved back here to Fayetteville, we got reintroduced and social media brought us closer. But uh, if you could just introduce yourself uh, to our audience, uh, Margaret, and, and of course, this kind of tells a little bit of, you know, a little quick little minute of who you are. Okay. You know, it's, it's always... Uh, a little difficult and it feels strange when you have to talk about yourself. But I am Margaret Pastor and um, I was born in Germany. I moved to um, Fort Devens, Massachusetts, and we lived there for about seven years and then we moved to Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I actually lived like in, uh, in North Carolina for the past, uh, over the past 35 years, I think. Um, uh, I I said also that I have um, I have one daughter um, who is I love her so much, and um, I have four three siblings. Um, unfortunately, one died, so it's just my oldest brother and I have two sisters. And um, I am a nurse, a nurse case manager, and I love taking care of my paratroopers and taking care of others. And I am actually a new author, which is really exciting. And uh, that's definitely one of my passions. I love to write. And actually, I've always loved to write, but I just don't think I, I realized it until about mm -hmm. three or four years ago. So um, that's a little about me. And I love to to just be there for people and be positive. Right. Well, you know what? I mean, that was awesome. And so let, let's just kind of talk, you know, from, and, and as I always start these interviews, Let's take it back. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to kind of go forward right here in the present, uh, and then we're going to go back, right? So we know that you just, again, became a brand new author. You're in the process of getting everything ironed out to be able to release your first book. Now, that book didn't just come overnight. Am I right? That's correct. All right. So there was some stuff that led up to it. It was some things that happened over the time, over time and years. Uh, and some things that you had to overcome, and then also some things that you, you know, again, have uh, battled and became a, a superwoman, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, you know, interview, uh, because, again, you didn't just let anything hold you back. You just went on, you kept on, and you just moved on, and, of course, changed your life. And so let's take it back. Let's take it back to why the book was written, first of all, uh, so we can talk, so people can understand, uh, you know, why you wrote this book. OK, so uh, first of all, I'm really not an emotional person, but whenever I talk about about my book and especially uh, certain chapters in the book, I, I will get emotional. So if I start to shed a tear, you know, y'all just please forgive me. Um, but the book came about um, because just I had so much sadness and despair and low self-esteem. Uh, because of my weight, and I wanted, I needed an outlet. I needed a way to to basically help me to get over those thoughts and feelings of worthlessness that I had. 
And in doing so, I also wanted to share uh, those, those, those feelings and thoughts with others um, and kind of be their voice, if you will. Um, and to let them know that if, if I'm able to, to, um, to get past all of that, that they can do the same thing. Uh, so well, that's, that's really how the book uh, came into, into start. Well, that's how I, I started out with, you know, writing the book. Now, and, and of course, I know there's so much stuff that happened along the way. And, and like you said, it was very traumatic. And, you know, I don't mean to open up any cans, you know, or anything like that. But, uh, you know, right now, I want, I want to really just hear your story because there's someone right now who's listening to this or who will listen to this. And then, of course, I want them to be to say, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it, too. And I've had that problem. And, and I used to go through this, too, as well. So um, if you don't mind, I, I know that it's, it's touching for you. Uh, but if you can kind of go back for us and just kind of tell us like how you were feeling in the moments and and then uh, just kind of just go from there. And of course, you're not going to make me cry. OK, OK. Um, well, it's I have to um, kind of be careful with my words because I don't want to give too much of the book away because That's actually, okay. of course, this is what the book is about. Um, but I basically been overweight all of my life. I think my normal size, um, the last time that I was a normal size person was when I was about seven. Um, we had just moved here from Massachusetts and I was, I've always been a daddy's girl, you know, that's in the book as well. And my daddy would always, uh, basically gave me everything that I wanted. And I always say that's probably what's wrong with me now. That's why I'm spoiled. But um, but he did. And in doing so, he would always, whatever types of food I wanted, he would, you know, he would take me to the restaurants and we would just hang out and have uh, father-daughter time. And a lot of that time included eating. And that's what I would do. Um, a lot of times, uh, that was, food was my friend. Food was my friend. I had best friends, you know, uh, they're in the book also. I had three best friends growing up and then I had some more really, really close friends. But when they weren't around, uh, food was my friend. And I would uh, sneak food, you know, into the bedroom. And I, I would, of course, I was starting to get plumper. And my mom, she was, she was always plump. And she would say, you know, you're getting a little fat there, Heidi. And I'd be like, yeah, no, you know, but I'm, I'm going to watch what I eat. And of course, I would just sneak, you know, in the bedroom and have food under the bed. And I would hide food in the refrigerator so my parents wouldn't see me eating because I knew that I was, you know, getting larger and larger. Um, also, in the neighborhood, um, you know, there's always kids in the neighborhood. And we lived in a court. And... Um, we I remember we'd be playing kickball or and you know how you pick teams as kids to play football to play um kickball. Yeah. Of course they, they didn't want to pick me because I was fat and I couldn't run to the bases that fast. So a lot of times I would um I would be last, you know, to be picked. And that, you know, that was that. So I just kind of got used to it. And of course all the names that I've I've been called over the years. Um, that's in the book as well. Uh, one guy called me Welltell, and he's he's one of my friends on Facebook. I don't know if he remembers calling me that, that but I definitely remembered uh, because, of course, I'm 50 and I still remember. Um, but uh, but I was called names like that, and um, just people would just make fun of me, of course, because I was fat, um, and. Mm -hmm. Of course, that would hurt my feelings. So I would go back into just hiding out in the bedroom and eating food. So it was just a, a vicious cycle. Um, and that was like in elementary school. And then um, high school, it was a little better in high school because I kind of lost some weight. But of course, I would I was on that roller coaster. I would lose weight, then I would gain it. I'd lose it, then I would gain it. Mm -hmm. um, same same thing in college, you know. Um, I think in college I got down to about um, probably probably my lowest in college was about uh, two fifteen, and for me that was really low because my highest was like three hundred pounds. So um, so 
So I did well. And of course, when I lost weight, then I would think that I was cute. And, you know, then of course I had lots of dates. So what do you normally do when you go out on dates? You go to dinner. So of course I would get comfortable again and start eating the wrong foods. Thank you. And uh, then I would gain the weight again. So it was just like yo-yo, like my entire life. And of course, into my adult years as well. Right. And so, you know, I know that's traumatic. I mean, I can feel that that emotion coming right back to you. And I mean, you almost got me. I almost got you. you almost, <laughs> I, I'm very emotional. So you almost got me. Hey, hey. <clears throat> so so the whole thing is this right here. What was the breaking point for you to where, you know, because I, I know it. When, when you, you know, obviously this is this went on, you know, up and down, up and down. And and then one day and I know it's probably not one day. I'm obviously I'm saying that, but maybe it was over a course of a few months. Maybe it was the course of the year that you say, you know what? I can't do this anymore. What was it that changed that for you? What was the pivotal moment that that really put that in there for you to, to change that? Well, you know, Tokoyo, unfortunately, there were lots of pivotal moments. You know, um, when I was younger, of course, I would get tired of, of children, other children picking on me. So I would go on these fad diets, you know, and I would lose the weight. And of course, I'd gain it back. Um, I don't know. Can I talk about the suicide? Can I talk about <laughs> your mind? Because, again, someone needs to do help it. others. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was younger, of course, I, I tried to. Uh, commit suicide a couple of times, and I'm sure my my family didn't know. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share this part. This is in the book, of course. Um, I was in college, and I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna share I'm gonna share it. Uh, I was in college, and I this is before before Jesus, before I was saved. So um, my boyfriend and I were living together, and I had gotten pregnant. And um, I only had one more semester left in nursing school, and I didn't want anything to to interfere with that. That was my thought, of course. I don't want anything to interfere with that. So I had an abortion, and this is this is one of the parts in the book that really. So I had the abortion, and um, um, my boyfriend and I broke up. Um, he went. He went on um, with his life and his career. He was a professional football player, so he went on to do that. And I was left there in the apartment by myself. And the girl upstairs from me, uh, she was. She and I were pregnant at the same time, and she had her baby. And she kept her baby. And at night, I would hear the baby crying, and I would I would jump up and I would go to like the corner of the the bedroom and I would go to get my baby, and then I re would remember I don't have a baby, you know. And then I would also remember that that's the girl upstairs, that's her baby. She actually kept her baby, and you didn't. So that was so hard for me. Um, so I actually went to the store, and I bought me some sleeping pills. And I bought some gin <laughs> and I came home. I locked the door. It was a small apartment, you know, just one way out and one way in uh, just a bedroom, a bathroom, uh, you know, the kitchen and living room. And I was there by myself and um, I started drinking the gin, started drinking the gin. And then I uh, had the sleeping pills and I took a handful of sleeping pills. And I remember sitting on the floor in the living room, and I remember I could feel myself starting to lose conscious consciousness, um, and that's what I wanted, of course, you know, because that that was the goal was to get rid of my life. Um, so I got up, I made it over back over to the table, to uh, I think I had some more gin, and I went over back back over to the table to grab the sleeping pills, and to Koyo sleeping pills were not there. They were not on the table. Nobody was in the apartment but me. And those pills were gone. So I remember searching through the garbage can. And I remember walking like uh, like in the back of the apartment looking for those pills. And, and I just I just remembered 
like any consciousness that was leaving, I think it came back because I was like, I'm the only one in here and those pills are gone. So by that time I was just freaking out. I didn't know what happened. And one of the girls, one of my friends from um, from down the street or around the corner, by that time she came and she knocked on the door and she was, you know, she was cursing, open up this GD door, open up this door. You know, so I opened the door and I, and I don't know, I, maybe I had told her what I was planning to do. I'm not even sure. Um, but I remember her making me, you know, throw up the pills and, and get in the shower and all this stuff. But the thing, like I said, those pills were gone to Koyo. Nobody mm -hmm. in the apartment but me. So I know that I don't know, you know, if the viewers believe in God or 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 not, or another higher power, but of course I believe in God. I know that an angel came in and took those pills. They were nowhere to be found. Um, so that was really a, a traumatic thing um, in my life. And and you know, and of course that affected me. And I did well for a while. You know, I, I lost some more weight and I just continued to think about that that happened to me. And I was right back at it. So to answer all your questions, I'm sorry, I just really felt like I needed to share that story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to, to answer your question, um, what was the final straw? Um back in 2000. 14, um, oh yeah, back in 2014, I, I had never been on a, uh, a flight before. I had never been on a plane before. And I had gotten a new job and I had to actually fly to uh, Texas um, to go for training. And I was like, no, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna fly, I'm okay. You know, my husband at the time, he was like, you need to fly, you need to get over this, you need to fly. So I was like, okay. So, um, you know, those seats are really tight. You know, by and, and then I was probably a good 275, 280. And I remember getting on that plane and barely being able to fasten that 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 seatbelt in the plane. Right. And I was so ashamed. And you know, it was a, a little uh not a little, but a guy beside me, and I guess he could feel that I was really sad and down and um and he made a comment like, uh, these stupid, these stupid seat belts, you know, they make them like everybody weighs a hundred pounds. And I was like, yeah, they do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that that was the point. And I was like, no, this is unacceptable. I can't even enjoy a flight, you know, on the plane because I'm too fat. I was like, no, something's got to give. So in 2015, um, that's where I started the transformation. Um, uh, with I had the first thing I had was a gastric sleeve surgery and I lost about a hundred pounds uh, with that. Really? Pounds. And um, and I kept it off for for six years, you know. And I was like, oh wow, this is great. And I started working out again. And, and to me, I was gaining weight, but you know, my trainer, um, my trainer who was actually the same guy that I dated in college. Um, we got back together for a quick season and he had started training me, you know, <laughs> with, uh, with weight loss. And I, I started to, I, I said I was gaining weight, but he said it was muscle, but I was like, no, this is unacceptable. I've got to do, I've got to do more. So I just continued to stay on track with my eating and everything and um, really just be determined because I did not ever, ever want to go down that road again with gaining and losing and gaining. That was too much, especially after the gastric sleeve uh, surgery. Right. So I had endicolectomy and um, had uh, also uh, surgeries to move my extra skin. And I'm here today and I weigh about 152 today. So I've lost almost, well, I've lost about 125 pounds. Good stuff. And you look amazing. Thank you. I, yes. feel, I feel amazing. And I can honestly say to Koyo, I love me. I love me. And for so many years, I hated myself because of the way that I looked. You know, and a lot of a lot of other ladies that are overweight, that might not be their story, but mm -hmm. that was my story. I hated the way that I looked uh, because I thought that I should look better and I thought that I should look different. 
Yeah. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. You know, it, it's it's sad sometimes when you when you look at stories like this because you you think, oh, poor that person, right? And and no and 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 you know and you and you and, and that's what that's what pers- people are, are thinking like poor this person, poor, poor that person. But their journey is for someone else. Like everything happens for a reason. Like you didn't go through what you went through. You didn't go through the ridicule. You didn't go through the up and downs. You didn't go through the relationships. You didn't go through all the things that that happened in your life for no reason. There was a reason for that. Yes. Right. And so that's why I'm so overjoyed to really just, you know, first of all, get reintroduced to you because we went to school together. Right. But, but at the same time, you know, we hadn't spoke since high school. We, you know, here we are. I don't know how many years it is now with 25 or something like that. I don't know. 30 years. I don't know. Right. Okay. I don't even know. But what I do know is this right here. Somebody is going to be touched by your book. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the crazy thing about it, there's probably people watching right now wishing they could have the book right now. And actually, my uh, my editor is on and she is so amazing. Uh, she's my editor. She's my publisher. Uh, she is just so talented and awesome. I am just, I'm just so glad that she's on. Good stuff. She's amazing. I'm definitely yeah. reaching out to her and uh, I'm just waiting for her to get back from Puerto Rico. Exactly. Time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but here's the thing. So I want to kind of just, you know, again, I, I love the fact that you were able to be honest with us and, and because a lot of people, they're they're not able to be their authentic self because they hide stories like that, yes. right? No one ever knows, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so again, thank you for your honesty, you know, um, because you didn't have to share that. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. But but let's kind of move on and, into a, a a different note now. So we got introduced, and 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 just correct me if you're wrong. If I'm wrong. Social media, of course, everyone knows I post, I post, I post, I post about all kinds of things, motivational, business, you name it, right? And I started seeing this young lady start to, uh, you know, like and comment on posts and things of that nature. Then I get what? A, a DM. And this young lady is excited about, hey, what are you doing? Right. right? I want to know. I got things I'm trying to do. So talk to us about, you know, what what was that? Because, again, you've never owned a business before. Is that right? Well, I had um, a weight loss business, <laughs> actually. Um, and to be honest with you again, to be honest, I never really like like wanted to uh, take have the responsibility of a business. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I am like very boxy, if you will. So I'm like, okay, I'm a nurse, you know, this is what I do. I take care of, you know, my paratroopers now. I take care of, you know, the ill, injured, sick people. Um, this this is what I do. I don't want to do a business. I don't, I don't want mm-hmm. to have that responsibility. But as I said, I was in a box. And I realized I, I need to get out of the box. And that was another right. thing with the um, with being overweight. I was always so afraid to try new things. I was always so afraid to to be in the in the public eye, if you will. I was I, I didn't really like to go places and do things. Um, again, in my book, uh, you'll you'll see that it's it's kind of a funny section. Um, but then, of course, it, it's kind of sad too because uh, my daughter she's twenty three now, and for like maybe the, from the ages like. Uh, for well, maybe five till about eight, the kids didn't think that she had a mom. They only thought that she had a dad because I I didn't like to go to like the PTA meetings or I didn't like to go to any of the the special little uh, the lunchings that they had, you know, where the kids, the parents can go and sit with the kids and have lunch and things. But her father would always go. So the kids would say, Geneva, do you really have a mom? You know, and I'm like, yeah, Geneva, they know that you have to have a mom or else you wouldn't be here. But I was just, <laughs> but I was just so, um, so ashamed, you know, to like go out in public and do things. Um, so that's why I shied away from that. But now I'm like, and I also realized there were so many things that I actually wanted to do. 
Like mm -hmm. when I was uh, 280 pounds, 300 pounds, I would have never done what we're doing now. No, because right. my, my thought was like, who wants to hear a fat girl talk? That's, mm -hmm. that's how I thought of myself. You know, I was like, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear me talk. So I don't think anyone else does. So that was just my thought. But, um, but now I have that, that extra incentive and I have that, um, that confidence that I can do whatever I want to do and it's going to prosper. You know, I just, I just need to put my hands to it and I know that it's going to, it's going to do well. And, and here's, here's what I've noticed. You say all those things that you in this box and hey, with all this, you know, being out there with people and, you know, all this stuff. But ever since you've been in this company, I've seen you leveling up from week to week to week to month. Well, now it's a couple months, right? Yes. And so, again, here you are doing videos and not just doing videos. You're walking uh, with Spanish, I don't know what they call those women workout gear. <laughs> yeah, what do y'all call that? Right. And you're, you're doing videos, you're flexing on people and all this stuff. And you know, again, like you said, that wouldn't have been your that wouldn't have been your story. That wouldn't have been your life two years ago, three years ago. But I just see this 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 metamorphosis in you, like in the last month. I mean, it's just ridiculous the levels that I believe in, and I believe in you. Like I knew because. I've been doing this long enough to know when I see somebody and meet someone who's got it. Yeah. Right. I, I just know, you, you know, some people it's going to take a while. Right. They'll get it eventually. Maybe. Right. But then there's some people who just out the gate get it. And that's you. Not only, uh, again, are you doing videos? Not only are you flexing on everybody, but what you're also doing now is you're breaking records right now. Just week, this week, just a few days ago, you were recognized as the number three production person with our nutritional product line uh, in our company. Out of 6,000 people worldwide, she was number three in the company. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited. You know what? And Tokoyo, I, I have to, of course, again, I have to be honest. I would not have been able to do any of this if it were not for you and for Ali and for the Yep group. I mean, you know, you, you, you're, you know, you, you're pretty hard there. You know, you, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you would call me and be like, okay, Miss P, you know, what you doing? You know, you're, you, uh, you know, you're, you're doing, you're doing what we're talking about. You know, this is what you need to do. Um, you need to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because right. you're messing up already. It is no longer Miss P. It's Coach P. No, it's not yet. You were supposed to say okay, that. Okay, okay. You got, okay. We were graduating. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, um, we call you Coach P in advance. Right, right. But <laughs> I, but I appreciate that because I, <laughs> I need that. I need that. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, I don't know, I get, maybe it's my personality, but people think that they might have to be, you know, a little soft on me because, oh, you know, she's so sweet and she's so kind and nice. But you're like, no, Miss P, this is what you're going to do. This is what you need to do. And I love that. I need that. And also, um, same thing. I used to work at Duke in the OR and my preceptor, Carla, she, she was no joke. She was like, okay, I taught you how to do this. Let's go. You got it. It's all on you. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And I had to, I had to stand up to the occasion. So um, I said all that to say that sometimes people need that, especially like you said, you've seen, you've seen something special in me. Um, whenever that scene, you know, like in other people, maybe that's what they need. They need someone like you. They need someone like Ollie to be like, okay, what you doing? Let's step it up. You can do this. Let's go. You know, to bring out that full potential in them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the reason why every person on this earth should have a coach. Absolutely. There, there's, there's no championship team that's ever been devised that ha didn't have a coach. That's true. Every team, team has a coach. Mm -hmm. Basketball, mm -hmm. NFL, you, we name, you name it. Even businesses yes. have coaches, like owners and CEOs, top CEOs have coaches. So how do you expect yourself to go out there and, and do all these things if you've never done something and not have someone to guide you? Exactly. And, and so it's like every coach has a coach, right? 
And so, I mean, like you, you keep mentioning Ali Madawi. That's my personal coach. He holds me accountable, right? And, and so, so that's the whole thing. So again, congratulations on everything that's just happening for you in business. And then right away, you know, we talk about, you know, plane trips back in the day. Well, we're going on another plane trip in June, right? Yes. We're going to Jamaica, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, so that's going to be fun. And, and of course, it's not going to be that same situation, it, it, you know, because you've worked on it. You, you've you built yourself up to this person uh, that now so many people see you as a light. I know I do. I, I know when I see, well, you know what? It's so crazy because some people don't know their own light, uh, how, how bright it shines on other people. I know when I see your name on my caller ID, I immediately start smiling. Like oh, literally, yeah. I start smiling because I know what you bring. You bring that energy. You're always excited. And, and even when you're, even though we're on the phone, I can see the smile, right? Um, and then, of course, everybody in our company, uh, they have recognized it all the way up to the CEO. I mean, and we're talking about over 6,000 people, and our CEO knows you on a first name basis. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Publicly traded company. So again, man, we're, we're super excited for you and, and and where you're going. And so if you can, I know that the book is still getting prepared. Do we have a, a time for when it's when it's gonna come out? Well, um actually my publisher is waiting on me. I'm I'm the hold up. Uh <laughs> I'm the hold up. Uh so perhaps um Let's see. What is this? April, May, June. maybe mid June or the end of uh, May, perhaps. Like I said, she, yeah. her team is waiting on me, so I, I have to get busy. Good stuff. Well, we can't hold her up because she's got to work on mine next. Exactly, um, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so you know there she is. <laughs> Definitely, guys. If you if you don't know this young young lady, uh, Nakia yeah. is just incredible. Definitely reach out to her because she can help you get your book done. Uh, you know, edited and published all in the same spot. So again, we appreciate her. And uh, so uh, real quick, um, you know, we're gonna go ahead and close it out right now. But you know, just give us some closing thoughts, like um, for that person who is listening, who is maybe going through what you have gone through, right? And uh, maybe they were thinking of, you know, that situation too, uh, as the worst situation and they didn't understand there was a tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Um, speak to that person and also speak to the, the person as well, who again, doesn't think that they could step out and start their own business or, and all that. So, you know, again, speak to that person who again has, you know, is going through battles, whether it be weight loss or whether it be whatever have you. Um, and then also that person who, again, doesn't think they can do something because someone else told them they couldn't. So let me go ahead and give it back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You know, um, there are about, it's about four ladies. Um, whenever I, I look at my post and I see that they've looked at it or that they have, uh, they've responded, I get so happy because these four ladies, um, I've known them, most of them through elementary school and we were, we were the same, you know, all three of us had, had issues with, with our weight, you know, and I, I don't. I want them to to realize that they don't have to be in that same situation either. You know, and I remember um, saying, oh, this is another weight loss thing, you know, and, and, you know, eventually you get tired because I think that I have tried every weight loss thing that there was, you know, in the 80s, in the 90s. You know, but and, and you get frustrated and then you're finally like, you know what, just forget it. I'm just not going to try to lose weight anymore. This is just how I'm meant to be, because that's where I was. But I finally realized that it wasn't here. My mind was not made up. My mind wasn't made up. And I hadn't fully committed to the work that I was going to have to put in to get it off and keep it off. So I can't, all I can do is, is be here as proof that if, if weight is the issue, 
I can just be here as proof because they know me. They've seen me. I'm always putting my before pictures up. They know where I was and obviously they can see where I am now. So hopefully they'll just do, you know, step by step and just just their mind will start to change and they'll realize, hey, if Margaret did it, then I can do it, too. So that that's my prayer for that. And as far as the business thing. Oh, wow. Um, just you have to step out on faith. You, you have to. There's so many things that I realize I've been holding myself back from because I was so afraid. I've always been uh, like I was the youngest of, of four kids and I seen all of them get in trouble, you know, for like sneaking out of the house, you know, doing crazy stuff and, you know, um, being in trouble with the law and being in trouble with my parents. And I was always like, uh -uh, I'm scared. I'm not going to do that. But not and and even today, you know, at work, um, I'm like, I'm scared. You know, is it? There's a door that we're not supposed to really use, and I'm like, y'all, I'm gonna use the door today. And everyone's like, so what? Go ahead, Miss Astor. I'm like, yeah, I know we're not supposed to, but in my mind, I'm still like, I don't want to get in trouble. But and that's good, you know, to a certain extent. But then the other part of that is that also bleeds it or bled into the other part of my life. Well, I'm, I'm scared to get on that plane or I'm scared to, to start this business or I'm scared to, to talk to someone because, you know, they might say no or they might not like me. You know, I'm, I'm scared to do that. So don't be afraid, you know, and, and you might fail. OK, well, then if you do fail, then you'll know what not to do. <laughs> So do something different next time, you know? Okay, so this doesn't work because I failed at that. So let me try something different. So failure, you actually learn what not to do as well as what to do. So That's I said all that to say, you know, life is short. Just don't be afraid. Just just take that leap, you know, and, and get definitely with great people like you, Tokoyo, uh, strong personalities like you and and just get behind those people and learn from them learn from them because you you're so great with with always wanting to help me and and everyone and yep and you want to see us do well and go go farther so I would say definitely just um, just reach out for help to those people that not only want to help you but that have already gone to where you want to be or they already are at the point where you're trying to get to. I mean, that's like, that's like so easy. Good stuff, good stuff. Strong J, good strong J. Um, <laughs> so, so here's the thing, man. It, it's, it's so amazing. You know, you know why I love home-based business and, and why I love helping people get started with a business because you get to see people grow. Yeah. Like, I, I was having a conversation with a, a gentleman earlier about this, Ali, actually, and just talking about just like people growing. Yeah. Like, it, it's like having a baby and, and watching that that baby grow from, you know, in my hands to, to be crawling and then walking and now, you know, and talking and all this stuff. And, and then you get to see that finished product of them out doing what you taught them or what you put into them, right? Yeah. And um, it's just amazing. And, and I see so much in you. And so that's why we continue to call. That's why we continue to, you know, you know, uh, tell you great things because I see it. Thank you. The, 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 I mean, if, until basically until you believe it, then you can you can borrow my belief if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so that's what you have to do. So anything that you can do in life, uh, you, again, you have to commit. And she said that. She said, you know, I, I had to commit. I, I, you know, I had to know. I, I knew there was some work to be done. And, of course, she said, you know what? I got to be willing to do the work. Yes. That's where most people drop the balls. They're not willing put to do work. the work. Put in work. So she was willing to put the work in. Now, guys, listen to this. Here's the other thing, too. And she's very um, competitive. Let me tell you. Yeah, she already collected money from myself and Jose Cartano. <laughs> yeah, we taking all our money. Uh -uh. We, we do a little, little contest. Right. We go get it. That's right. 
So again, I need to get my money back. But anyway, <laughs> the, the whole thing is you got to be willing to put in the work, uh, what she said. The se other thing, second thing she said is you have to find someone who sees something in you and who's willing to go the, go the distance with you, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then you got to be willing to give that person leeway to do it, right? Because there's so many people who have those people in their life, but they're pushing them away. Yes. Right, ready because they're not ready to receive it yet. Yeah, they're, they're not ready to move yet. Mm -hmm. And so again, you got to be willing to let someone help you. Yes. Um, and then the third thing is you got to give it time. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to give yourself time, you know, to uh, to grow. You got to give yourself time to become that person who will attract other people. Yeah. Right. That that's some people got it naturally. Right, that gift of the gab or whatever, yeah. but everybody doesn't have that. So again, you've got to give yourself time to be able to attract the right people. Yes. And may I add right? one other thing, sir? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You have to be teachable. You can tell me the right things to do all day long, you know, uh, throughout the day, but if I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm doing it my way. He. Yeah, it worked for him, but yeah, I'm doing my own thing. Then it's not going to work. You're still not going to be successful. You have to be teachable. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and we can say it like this in the industry. We say right or rich. You want to be right or you want to be rich? That's good. Right or rich. Which one do you want? That's good. Right? So, hey, listen, it's been a plum, please, and pleasure. And I appreciate you all for listening. Again, if you got some great value out of this, definitely, you know, show some love into the comments section. Of course, if you don't, if you're not a friend to this young lady right here, Margaret Pastor, you need to go ahead and send her a friend request like right now, or, or as my friend used to say, right now. Right now. Uh, so, again, yeah, you need to go ahead and send her a friend request right away. Uh, and so, uh, again, guys, my name is Takoya Carlton. This is Relentless Movers Podcast. And of course, I help struggling entrepreneurs and individuals by creating tools and a custom roadmap to gain more clarity and achieve real-time success. So with that, guys, it's been a plum, please, and pleasure. I look forward to seeing you guys at the top, from the top, or over the top. Take care, take charge, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.